We actually have experts that are here that I actually could talk about, you know, uh, where the current state of research is in, in this regard. Because I want I want to bring this back into the context of really really what we're talking about. Um, uh, and this is a one of one of my favorite you know you know issues that we, that that people really need to understand is the cancer cells are your cells. This is not a foreign invader. Right? Um, it, it, there's, there's a certain simplic simplistic notion that somehow the cancer is foreign to you and therefore your immune system has to attack it the same way that it would attack a, 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 um, a, a virally infected cell or attack a bacterial cell, but these are really your own cells. So they, they actually um, live off the same things that your normal cells live off. And I'm wondering if our panelists would like to talk about the requirements, like particularly in culture, of, of, of some of the cells that we've been studying of requirements for some of the same nutrients that are actually required for normal for normal cell cell, cell behavior, and uh, that that we grow cells in the laboratory and we study them in the laboratory, and um, uh, and and we've actually learned a lot about, about about this. Who would like to sort of talk about that aspect, Bob? Larry, let me just follow up just for a couple seconds. To follow up on that question is an allusion to the uh, notion which is now increasingly accepted that preventing the appearance of a disease is ultimately going to be far more effective than curing it once, uh, once it actually is diagnosed in the, in the clinic. And in the case of vitamins, you have one of the world's experts in the room here whom you can talk to directly later on, the epidemiologist Walter Willett of the Harvard School of Public Health. He knows almost more than anyone on the whole planet on what you should and should be, not be taking every day in order to lead quote, unquote, a virtuous lifestyle. Yeah, I, I, I actually check with Walt every morning before I eat breakfast as to what I should eat. So we, we, we exchange. Where, where are you, by the way? You're there. Okay, I'm going to call upon you in a second. But I'd like to talk about vitamin. Th th this is an important point to me because people is, uh, you know, are, are you know, commonly saying I should take more of this certain vitamin, and I'm always very concerned that you're feeding the cancer as well as the, as well as the normal cells in this kind of regard. Requi vitamin requirements of cells and culture. Joan. Well, I find it difficult to answer the, the question in general of, you know, what's good for cancer cells and what's not good for cancer cells, because <clears throat> in different contexts, something that might be good for one type of cancer cell may not be good for another, so it's really hard to make generalizations, <clears throat> and like, for instance, antioxidants may be really good in protecting cells from getting mutations, because <clears throat> um, oxidants or um, reactive oxygen species are able to mutate DNA. So keeping those reactive oxygen species at a low level could help prevent cancer. But there's some research, some of which is coming from our lab now, that suggests that, it, that um, antioxidants may actually prevent the elimination of abnormal cells. So it, it's kind of a yin-yang, and so I think that that's why you know, in thinking in a bigger picture of the whole organism, the human, it's, it's very difficult to um, make generalizations about what's good and what's not good. So we see that in culture, and then as you can extrapolate to the whole organism.